So some of you may be wondering why I'm dressed in a suit today. Uh, for this video, we're going to be discussing a legend, a giant, in the uh, e electronics experimenter area. I'm talking about Alfred Powell Morgan. And Morgan, of course, uh, the author of... Uh, the boy's first book of radio and electronics and the whole series that went along with that, uh, along with some foundational uh, books at the turn of the century, uh, represents at least two generations of electronic experimenters and uh, many, many hams, in fact. So I would suggest that you stop the video and uh, put on a tie and appropriate uh, you know, appropriate clothing before going any further with the video because we're going to get pretty deep into uh, Alfred Morgan and we're going to talk a little bit about some of his uh, beginners and kids experimenter projects that he developed as well as a little bit of history on where he got his start, uh, the people that he met and uh, what he was doing in high school and uh, his experiences uh, at MIT and so on. So again, if you don't know Alfred Morgan, uh, he wrote uh, many, many books that became very important in the young engineering lives of uh, many hams and experimenters. And uh, one of his famous projects from the boys' first book of radio and electronics was the single tube regen, which we're going to cover, um, of course, uh, we will culminate the two-part series in a regenerative receiver, but it won't be using this design. It will be from an older book that Morgan wrote, and we'll be uh, using tubes more from the 30s uh, time frame. So uh, this is it, uh, the expose on Alfred Morgan. Alfred Powell, nicknamed Skipper Morgan, uh, actually an amateur. His uh, call sign was 2Z India, 2ZI, the second call district. He was an electrical engineer, an inventor of radio and mechanical devices with some patents, an author and editor of numerous magazine articles, uh, monthly periodicals, uh, editor, as well as an author of many popular technically oriented young person's books, children's books, throughout his lifetime. Uh, basically from the beginning of the 20th century to the later part. He was born April 15th, 1889 in Brooklyn, New York. Uh, the son of Frederick Powell and Margaret Pattison Morgan, uh, who owned a glass factory. So he came out of some money. So as a small boy in Brooklyn, observing the hustle and bustle of the Red Hook uh, area and the dry docks, um, he would have seen uh, all kinds of uh, factories and uh, sites like the ships returning from the Spanish-American War uh, coming into the dry docks. But at one point, his father decided to sell the glass factory in Brooklyn and move the family to what we would call the suburbs, Montclair, New Jersey. Uh, why Montclair? Uh, families began to move into the town to take advantage of the school system, especially the high school, which was a state-of-the-art institution. And it was said to be uh, similar or comparable to expensive private institutions. Uh, anybody ever heard of uh, moving to a town just for your children's education? It happens. Anyway, uh, during grammar school, he says uh, by 1903 he was tinkering with wireless apparatus. Apparently there were several trips back and forth from Montclair to Brooklyn. Uh, he visited the Children's Museum where he learned more about radio and uh, found out about the powerful Navy wireless station uh, located in Brooklyn. So let's talk about the high school a little bit. Uh, Montclair was already on the move in the 1880s well before the family arrived. 
uh, some very influential people were moving there and the growth and demands of the population demanded that a new state-of-the-art high school be built. The new high school was probably the finest in the state of New Jersey and it opened in 1893. So this is a public high school. Uh, the entire cost, including the land, was $125,000, a huge sum at the time. And other systems throughout the country modeled their buildings after those in Montclair. So uh, they also decorated this new high school with uh, a fantastic man named Randall Spaulding, uh, one of the half dozen foremost educational leaders of his time in the late 1800s. Uh, Randall Spaulding became a much loved and admired principal and superintendent of schools. He was particularly interested in the Quincy method introduced in 1875 by Francis, by Francis Parker, a superintendent of schools in Quincy, Massachusetts. Rather than rote learning and a rigid routine, emphasis was instead placed on social skills, self-expression through cultural activities, physical training, teacher prepared materials, experience based learning, and the children's own writing. Uh, field trips, art, music, and crafts were encouraged. So this was a new kind of a high school and this was the high school system that Morgan would enter. Morgan was gifted and mostly self-taught. He was a natural illustrator so he could do some fantastic drawings and he seemed to be a math and physics wizard. He was making money as a student teacher while in high school in New Jersey. So he was a student who could understand advanced subject matter and one already being driven to relate through drawing and teaching to explain it to other students. He says, and I quote, I visited many famous scientists and engineers and asked some questions during this high school period. Among them, Thomas A. Edison, Nikola Tesla, and Santos Dumont. Could you imagine approaching these men as a 14-year-old and asking them questions? To have that resource uh, in your neighborhood, so to speak, in New Jersey. Morgan first became interested in the new technology of radio in 1903 and he garnered sufficient details from articles in Scientific American to build a simple spark set that could communicate several hundred feet. This is all at age 14, by the way. Now, when Morgan mentions that he saw an article in Scientific American, I found the, uh, the issue. It's September 1901, and uh, this is what the cover looks like on the magazine. But here is the article that he looked at and it is how to construct an efficient wireless telegraph apparatus at small cost by Frederick Collins. Now you people may be familiar with Frederick Collins. He had quite a, uh, a radio history himself. He's one of those radio pioneers that published uh, many books. And uh, here's his article. Here is the actual transmitter that Morgan uh, attempted to build. And uh, Here's the coherer, and here is the receiver. Now, I'm not going to go any further with this. I'm convinced that Frederick Collins and his many writings in the popular electrical press had a great influence on the young Morgan, perhaps even his most influential mentor. Collins, beside having a gift for absorbing all technology, cutting edge especially, and being a descriptive writer, he was also a flamboyant self-promoter in the style of Hugo Gernsback a little bit later. And he wrote in the same boy's style that would become Morgan's signature style. Collins ethically? Well, that's another situation entirely. But I have to assume that Morgan had access and was a sponge for these technical magazine articles all through his high school years. Morgan's next step was almost inevitable. He attended the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. MIT was a place where he could make a little bit of money. I started writing books and magazines while at college in order to earn money, according to uh, Morgan. But uh, dropping out of MIT seems to be a common thread for those special enough to go, but smart enough to leave. 
Alfred Morgan's first name appearance in print okay, was in a New York Times article describing his attempt to test fly a homemade aircraft. This was 1909. 1909. <laughs> his test was unfortunately unsuccessful, but the subsequent efforts must have been more satisfactory because uh, Morgan's debut as an author was a book on the subject, How to Build a 20-Foot Biplane Glider. Morgan's first interest is in radio, and uh, it's called wireless at the time. Remember, this is the turn of the century, very early, uh, really before the vacuum tube came out and uh, did much. And uh, so it's going to be all spark, and it's going to be all talking about, uh, you know, crystal sets and so on. And much of his early writings, and really if you total most of his work, is about wireless. So how to make money. Uh, he left college, obviously, because he wanted to be an entrepreneur, he wanted to make money, and he formed a partnership with a man named Adams. We don't know much about him. He was a silent partner. Obviously, he's the one that put in the cash. And they formed a radio manufacturer called the Adams Morgan Company, or more simply, Amco. It's all about Amco. And Boy, this is going to be fun. This is the Amco catalog from 1915. Look at this thing. And already you can see Morgan's uh, illustration skills. This is all hand drawn by Morgan. Absolutely amazing. Now remember, this is 1915. This is really when uh, vacuum tubes were very, very new. And most amateurs were using spark type transmitters and crystal radios. So this is already catalog number six. So Amco has already been in, in uh, production for quite a while. Now remember, this is a mail order company. Adams Morgan. And uh, it, there's a lot of interesting marketing in this, uh, in this catalog, by the way. You'll see that. So he goes through the postal rates, you know, so you can order your stuff. Again, see APM. See how he's an illustrator? He's really into batteries and storage cells. And a lot of the, the uh, catalog is devoted to uh, small storage cells, cells that could be used for radios and for uh, transmitter stations. So we'll go through some of that. Ah, he gets into uh, uh, transformers. They're producing uh, transformers. And of course, with any transformer, you need to be able to rectify it. So here we are, a bridge rectifier in 1915. And it's made from uh, four electrolytic diodes. Okay, an electrolytic rectifier is a chemical diode. And this is full weight in 1915. Uh, now we get into some of the wireless apparatus, and he shows a. a a kid and he's got his antenna, he's got his loose coupler receiver. This is basically the whole thing you need to do uh, wireless in 1915. So first we have some loose couplers and these are called junior receiving sets. Why are they called junior? Because they are not long wave sets, meaning higher frequencies. They're much smaller than the large loose couplers used uh, by Navy ships in the long wave band. So they're, they're called juniors. In uh, ham uh, stations, you will see these junior couplers along with antenna tuning coils. And uh, variable capacitors so that you can uh, tune your setup. Uh, you need your detector stand. Uh, the helix is used for uh, your spark gap transmitter. This is your high frequency transformer used uh, for the spark gap. Uh, here's the various, uh, oh wow, a coherer and decoherer. Uh, I want to let you know this is a complete catalog. Uh, a lot of people have brushed over this part of Morgan's uh, development and uh, life. Let me tell you, he was a major force in 
early ham radio. Uh, he was the ham radio parts supplier uh, before 1920. Look at all of these parts. They're absolutely amazing. It goes on and on. And he talks about transmitting outfits uh, very simply. This is everything you need to get on the air, how to put up an antenna. I mean, it's no wonder he can talk about almost everything because he owned a company that sold almost everything. Look at, we even have a uh, a revolver flashlight. Of course, this isn't a revolver, but it's a, a, a modern automatic revolver. Isn't that interesting? But it's really a light. Miner's lights, uh, scarf pins that light up, all kinds of interesting uh, things here. You can imagine his brain is going a million miles an hour, filling this catalog with all kinds of interesting devices. If you see something you like here, just let me know and I'll get it on order for you. A steam engine. <laughs> it's just absolutely amazing. By the way, this comes from uh, uh, World Radio History. They're the ones that actually put up this uh, fantastic catalog of AMCO. Are you into uh, drones and uh, model airplanes? Well, he was into it back in 1915. Here's a dual propeller model airplane. How about electric locomotives and train sets? There's everything you need to get a train set at that time. Sold by your one source, AMCO. And look at all of these interesting books. The Boy Electrician. We just looked at that book. And... Uh, here it is, his uh, treatise on uh, wireless telegraph construction for amateurs, 163 illustrations, $1.50, and uh, some other books from other authors um, he's got in here as well. Really, really interesting stuff in this, uh, in this uh, fantastic uh, catalog put out by AMCO. And it goes on and on. So we can see that Morgan's background and his knowledge of building kits and building uh, things for children comes directly out of his involvement with the Adams Morgan Company. This is where all of his knowledge came from, studying all of the parts needed to do early wireless, uh, electricity, transformers, train sets, and of course airplanes. And uh, this is like the Heath kit and the Allied catalog combined. And in the end he's got all the ship and land station call signs. Hope you guys have enjoyed. This is the background that's in Morgan's head. All of these parts and this is the foundation that will allow him to write on just about any subject. The Adams Morgan Company. By 1910, Morgan, at age 21, had accumulated sufficient expertise to publish a most influential book, Wireless Telegraph Construction for Amateurs. And QST called this text the standard handbook for amateurs. It's easy to see why. Even this early publication exhibits the same clear writing style and meticulous detail that made those boys' books, like the first, second, and third book, fourth book of radio and electronics, so effective. One can imagine that a ham of 1910 would, no, would need no more than Morgan's book to get on the air. Basically, you're building a spark coil, you're building a loose coupler, a crystal set, some headphones, putting up an antenna, and you're on the air. So it's also about this time in 1913 that Morgan publishes his famous book, The Boy Electrician. Now this Boy Electrician book not only talks about wireless, it talks about all aspects of electricity and uh, all the new gadgets and projects that were coming uh, from the uh, 
burgeoning electronics industry of the time. Um, of course, this is a reprint. This is a brand new book from Amazon. And I imagine that uh, this is public domain and they've made a nice hard copy, hardcover copy of the book. Comes with a lot of warnings. <laughs> uh, how about this one? The X-ray machine project is included in this printing for the intellectual understanding it offers to the reader. Do not attempt to build or use an x-ray machine. So there's a lot of warnings I had to put in here with the book because some of the experiments are a little bit risky. But The Boy Electrician, this is a wonderful text. You really have to have this in your collection. Uh, you'll be building a lot of things in this book and having a lot of fun. So this really is where Morgan starts to kick off his uh, boys aspect of, uh, of his writings. And it's during the time that he's actually starting up the Amco Company. So Morgan knew something about just about every subject that you uh, you are interested in, from electromechanics to electricity to radio to chemistry, electrochemistry, uh, pets and all kinds of projects, train sets, you name it. He was into it all. I hope you've enjoyed this little expose on Alfred Powell Morgan.